I keep saying let's get into the list and then I have other things to say. Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. This is going to be the last book video on the channel for 2020. I will be back on Monday, January 11th with the next book video, the first book video of 2021. This channel actually takes a two week break over Christmas and New Year's, but because of the days of the week I'm starting and stopping, the books will wait for three weeks. I am going to put timestamps in the description down below so the progress bar will do the, the breakup thingy so you can skip to the parts you actually want to hear. But I'll tell you right now what we're going to do. First, I am going to talk about my top 20 reads of 2020. That was supposed to be last week's video, but I had technical difficulties that were taking way too long and I had other things to do and we had to just not have a video. I did post about that on my community tab. In the future, if you're wondering what happened if I don't post on a day I'm supposed to post, I will post on the community tab. I know at least one of you saw it because I got a comment, but I also know I usually don't see the community tab stuff from the people I follow unless I'm looking on their community tabs. Once I'm done talking about the top 20 reads of 2020, I will talk about the year of 2020 in general in terms of book content here and on the blog and just reading in general. And then I'm going to talk about my goals for 2021. Book goals, channel goals, personal goals, not art goals because you have to come back on Wednesday for that. So first of all, we are going to dive into my top 20 of 2020. But first, a little drama discussion here. I want to address the, the worst of videos you may see people doing or bloggers posting on their blogs. I'm not going to post one. You will never see me do a worst of the year type compilation because I don't want to spend the time and energy to talk about things I didn't like. But there's a lot of drama going on right now because there are a few authors who have gone out and found people doing their worst reads of 2020 videos and blog posts and they're attacking it, they're attacking those creators, they're ranting on Twitter going, what if we made a worst bloggers of 2020? What if we made a worst YouTubers of 2020? The issue is that the authors are finding negative reviews and taking it personally. What I want to say is, if you are making a negative review type of content, be polite, be constructive, give the good with the bad, suggest a proper audience for the work. That's what I do if I'm going to post a review that's less than three stars. If you're an author and you come across somebody who read your work and didn't like it and they're saying why, that content's not for you. It's for the other readers and maybe for your publisher. It's, it's, not, it's not a reflection on you as a person, authors. It's not an attack one person didn't like one book, it happens to be yours, that's gonna happen. Not everybody's gonna like every single book they ever read, and if we only put out our positive reviews, every book would be five stars, and nothing would stand out, and you wouldn't sell anything because it would five stars would then be the average. That's my two cents on the worst of drama right now. On with my top 20! <laughs> so. I have a top 20 reads of 2020 list. What this comes from is the group blog I contribute to. We were all doing our top 10 reads of the year on given days in December. I thought that was cool. I decided to expand it to top 20 and I did my top 20 tour reviews on my blog and my top 20 other reviews on the group blog. They don't necessarily have to be books published in 2020, they just have to be books that I read in 2020. Most of them are also published in 2020. Caveat that this list is in no particular order, but also caveat, this does not include stuff I read after roughly December 8th, because that's when I wrote those posts. So, like, for example, where did I put them? Sirens Unbound and Mages Unbound over here. I rated Mages Unbound 5 stars. It's not on this list because I finished it after I wrote this list, so yeah, caveat there. I reserve the right to put this on next year's list if it's not ranked out by 20 other books. Also, not looking for pats on the back here or anything, just giving some information if you are interested in checking these books out. I will be linking all these books in the description. I'll be linking to my review posts, which also have purchase links if you are interested. There are 20 books here, 
11 of them, a little over half, have LGBTQIA representation, most of those being the main character. Some of them, that's the whole point of the book. And 9 in 20 of these, just a little under half, have by POC leads, leads romantic interest, or very important secondary point of view character. Of all 20, only three of them are neither. One of them is a mystery set in 1950s Toronto, Canada, and it's definitely a white lead with her white family. One of them is aliens, <laughs> and one of them is a middle grade 11 year old boy going to a wizardry school and the only reason I know he's definitely white is because of the cover art and other than that I don't remember any physical descriptions standing out and it's a children's book about a child so there's no romantic stuff coming into it so there wasn't room for LGBTQIA stuff. What went wrong with last week's video was my editing software really needed to be updated and I didn't realize that and I had a huge amount of footage because I actually like did a mini review on all of these and had other stuff to talk about besides and when I got to about 40 minutes of raw footage the program just started crashing again and again and again and by the time it was like five o'clock in the evening on the day I was supposed to upload I still didn't even have it ready to export and I had a review due the next day that I hadn't finished reading <laughs> So I had to throw in the towel, post it on the community tab, hoped you guys would see it. I'm gonna run through the list, I'm gonna tell you what the book's called, I'm gonna tell you who wrote it, I'm gonna tell you what genre it is, I'm gonna tell you what I rated it out of 5 stars, and you can go find the links in the description and read my reviews. First on the list, A Shot of Murder by Brenda Gale. This is a Canadian historical mystery, 1950s Toronto, Canada, and it's 5 stars. Number two, Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is YA fantasy, own voices, brilliant novel. I could talk forever about this. If you look on the channel I used to be uploading book content on, I did a mini review of this one along with one or two others published the same day. If you want a dedicated video to this book, I will do it, let me know. Number three, Becoming Human, Amy Michelle Carpenter. This is a YA science fiction. I rate it five stars. This is the other one, one of the other ones I said doesn't have BIPOC or LGBTQIA content that stood out to me, but again, it's aliens. <laughs> Number four, Kala by Christina Bauer. This is, is definitely fantasy. The tour listed it as YA and then corrected us and said it wasn't YA. The character's pretty young, mentally at least. She's a young adult. She's like a new adult, like 20s. It could easily be YA. I rate that one five stars. Number five, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. This is his first science fiction book, his first adult category book. I rate it five stars. It is amazing. I reviewed it as an audio advanced copy and I went ahead and then ordered, pre-ordered the hardcover because this is gorgeous and it's amazing and I need to read it with my eyes too because it's a different experience. Yeah, five stars. Number six, Moon and Bastet by E.S. Denon. This is a magical realism story and I rated it four stars. Number five, Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. YA fantasy, urban fantasy. It's also LGBTQIA owned voices. Has by POC characters. I rated it five stars. I am finally getting my review out on the blog today, the day this goes up. Monday the 21st. Number eight, She's the One Who Thinks Too Much by S.R. Cronin. This is a historical fantasy. I rated it four stars. It has its issues, but it was really compelling. I loved it. The same company I did the tour with for that one is running the tour for book two in March, and I am signed up to do that one. I cannot wait to get my hands on that book and read it. Number nine, The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. This is a historical fantasy and I rated it five stars. I could talk forever about this one, but we don't have time. Let me know if you want a dedicated video. Number 10, The Waltz of Devil's Creek by Justine Carver. This is a historical fiction, very important story about a white girl living in a black community. She was raped. It's Jim Crow era and she's not letting it be swept under the rug. Very important story. I rated it four stars rather than five, even though the majority of the book was awesome because the prologue is written from the point of view of a black slave several generations before, and 
<laughs> just the way the voice was written for that point of view feels racist. And there is there's very little information about who this author is, there's no pictures of her, but from the little bio that is written and from the fact that the rest of it is a white point of view, I think she's a white woman. So I, I could not give this five stars with that prologue. If the prologue had been a third person narrator or just incorporate that important bit of the story into the narrative somewhere else, it would have been a five. Number 11, Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is a YA contemporary slash romance, LGBTQIA issues by POC issues. Five stars, amazing book. I did do a video on the old book channel. It, the review needs an update. I wasn't very skilled in reviews yet. Number 12, Why Can't Life Be Like Pizza by Andy V. Romer. This is a YA contemporary. It is an LGBTQIA issues book. I rated it four stars out of five. I didn't like the format it was written in. It was 15 year old boy writing in a diary for the whole thing, about 300 pages, but it, it had its charms. 13, Boy Queen by George Lester. This is one of my absolute favorite reads of 2020. It was published August 6th this year. This is a drag queen's coming of age story. YA contemporary LGBTQIA issues, super sweet, rated at five stars. Number 14, With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I listened to the audiobook from Libby and then I went ahead and ordered the hardcover because it's amazing and I need to read it again and I need to force it on my friends. This was written last year, but I just read it this year. This is YA contemporary fiction, its own voices in that the author is also a bi POC person and there are racial issues in the book, but I don't think she was a teen mom. Five stars, amazing book, read it. Number 15, Dragonborn by TJ Reynolds. This is a lit RPG book. I've read I listened to it as an audiobook. Five stars. This was my first experience with lit RPG. If you're unfamiliar, that is role-playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons done as a book. Not not a choose your own adventure, just just lifted what happened in a campaign and made it into a book. I don't know if it was played as a campaign first, but that kind of idea. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I have done tabletop and live action role-playing. I have done it as a player, I've done it as an NPC because I used to date a storyteller. Storyteller being the term for dungeon master in the World of Darkness franchise by White Wolf. This was probably the best lit RPG book I could pick for an introduction to the genre. I absolutely loved it. I think you would like it too even if you aren't familiar with the games. This is turning into a review. I'm not doing reviews. <laughs> Number 16, Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a YA contemporary that everybody needs to read. It is beautifully written, but it's heartbreaking and it's heavy, and there are a lot of content warnings on it. Look at my review down below, five stars. Number 17, The Rage Room by Lisa DeNicolitz. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. This is a speculative science fiction. I read it five stars, I absolutely loved it. And she's so sweet, she thanked me for the review on three different platforms. Number 18, The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Yes, I'm way late on this one. I realized that it was published in like 2013, I think. <laughs> but I listened to the audiobook. I used an Audible credit when I still had a subscription there. Amazing, every audiobook should be narrated by Neil Gaiman himself. This is low fantasy, magical realism five stars. If I could give it a million stars, I would. Number 19, The Reluctant Wizard by A.A. A. Warren. This is a middle grade high fantasy. Uh, I rated it five stars. And finally, number 20, The Cyborg Tinkerer by Meg Latour. You've heard me talk about that one a lot, both on this channel and on the old book channel. I was on her street team, so disclaimer there, but I genuinely love this book and rated it five stars. Genre? Steampunk? Fantasy? Science fiction? Science fantasy? LGBTQIA, romance, very steamy, dragons, everything. <laughs> it's an amazing book. I have talked a lot about it. You know about it by now. Go check out my other videos on it. So a summary of 2020 as a year in terms of books, book content, reading. This was the year that I decided I was going to make an effort to get back into reading and get back into writing. And I decided that I was going to actually write everything I read at the very least on Goodreads. 
I have a marker in the wrong place and it's bothering me. I have almost met that goal. I owe a review for You Should See Me in a Crown. Also the Gilded Wolves, I want to say. I'm not quite sure. I will look at my Libby history after I have notes down for those two. I need to write the reviews. And then there was one, an author approached me for a review and I DNF'd at like 6%, which is not enough to even do a DNF review. The author said it was going back to the editor, which she <laughs> desperately needed. And then the author contacted me again within two months and gave the exact same proposal as before and didn't indicate that they remembered that they had talked to me before. And so like the amount of editing it needed, it clearly hasn't had yet. And they didn't treat me like somebody they talked to before. So no, they're not getting that review now. And if they ask again, they are getting a one star because that's the lowest I can give takedown review on Goodreads because I'm not a vindictive person, but that's that's unacceptable. Don't treat your reviewers that way. If you're also a reviewer and you're curious about who that is, message me privately and we'll talk. So in terms of reading, I've had great success reading. I, I set a very conservative reading goal for 2020 of 60 books when I set it at the very end of May, so I figured like I've got like half a year left to read blown that goal out of the water. I'm not entirely sure what goal I'm setting for 2021, but it'll be way higher than 60 books. In terms of writing, yes, I have been writing blog content, so I'm flexing the writing muscles, I'm writing reviews, I'm writing some unique articles on my blog, I'm doing a lot of turning press kits into blog posts. I haven't actually gone and taken the dive back into my creative writing like I intended. So that'll be in the goals section. The fall got kinda crazy when I discovered blog tour companies. I was volunteering to review on everything that sounded like something I would want to review, but I wasn't requesting specific dates, and I wasn't writing down which dates I was requesting because I wasn't requesting specific dates, and I have ended up with a few weeks over the past couple of months where I had four or more books due for reviews in the same week between tours and arcs I had requested on NetGalley, so it got crazy. If you're watching this and for some reason and you're an author who has sent me a book outside of those things and you're waiting for a review, that's why I haven't got to it yet. I put too much on my own plate. So I've learned a lot this year about how to operate in this space as a book reviewer, and I'm really excited for next year. Goals for 2021. Book stuff first, because that's why you're watching this video, right? You're here for the book content. I haven't set an exact number yet for my Goodreads reading goal. It's going to be at least 150, because I will be doing more kidlit books that'll put at least 30 in there. I have started to fix my scheduling habits, but it's I'm going to still be regretting my decisions for the next month or two into 2021. But the goal now is I will record every book I am given or every book I request or volunteer for in the same spreadsheet with the days that the reviews are due or the days it's publishing so that I don't overwhelm myself anymore. So starting like March will be a lot better. For the blog more broadly, I want to get to a point where the blog is working for me. And by that, I mean I'm getting paid for some of the posts, be that through sponsorships or authors actually paying me to prioritize the review. Not paying me to be insincere and write a good review when it's not, but paying me to prioritize the review and really get it out there and promote it. Maybe I'll start advertising for other bloggers. I don't know. I've seen that. Not sure. I want to get my email list going. Um, I also want my blog to work for me in that I want people coming to my blog or to my channel or whatnot to notice that I am for hire as an editor and as an illustrator and I would like to work for you. Goals for this channel, generally speaking, not art content because that's coming on Wednesday in the art video. We made it to 1,000 subscribers and then blew past that this year, which is amazing and that is one of the two requirements for the YouTube Partner Program to be able to monetize on this channel. You've been hearing me say that on and off all year that I'm going to have a big giveaway when I get to that point when I'm able to monetize. 
Clearly that's happening next year in 2021. I still need the watch hours. Ever since I added this third dedicated day to the channel, moved my book content over here from the other channel, the watch hours have slowly been ticking up. This month actually looks amazing compared to previous months, so we're gonna get there. So that's part of my goals for the channel, to actually get to a point where I can turn on ads and monetize. YouTube is talking about running ads on videos that are advertiser friendly, regardless of whether or not the creator is in the partner program. So if you actually have ad blocker turned off and you start seeing ads run, but I haven't announced that the giveaway is happening yet, that's probably YouTube being... I can't say what I want to call them. <laughs> And that probably means I'm not actually monetized yet and they're getting free advertising revenue off of me. I promise when I get to that point, I will do the giveaway. More on that next year. I, I'm sure this video is getting long enough. I would also like input from you guys. Please do comment down below. Give me some constructive comments here. What do you want to see me do with the book part of this channel in 2021? Do you want to see more videos that are just one book dedicated reviews? Do you want to hear about my reading progress? Do you want to see me do more tag videos? Do you have suggestions for me? So this has been a lot of fun. It's been a great year. I am looking forward to doing more book content in 2021. Remember that the channel is going on a two-week break over Christmas, but because of the days of the week that that's happening on, the book content will be on break for three weeks. I will see you with another book content video on Monday, January 11th. And if you want to check out any of the books I talked about today on my top 20 list, the links to all of the blog posts with purchase links are in the description down below. If you're also here for art, I will see you on Wednesday. Otherwise, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, have a great new year, and I will see you on the 11th. If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up here on the left side of the screen. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!